Hello. My so-called job demands that I buy many used motorcycles. But a sample size of 30 is statistically dick. And still, I take the occasional L on the used market. So I scraped Facebook for 30,000 data points and made this Zuckerbergian Jackson Pollock. Do you hear that? Well, that's the sound of the people abusing Facebook for its data. So I've got Marketplace open for every major city in North America. And load my scraping program. And set the range to infinite scroll. Target price. Target year, make and model. And I'll just work on exporting that to Google Sheets. Shut up, mom! Okay, populating the first 3,000 data points. Let's get a visual. Turns out great data brings great opacity. We cast our net over a continent and caught hundreds of chads posting their 20-year-old Dyna at $20,000 because of the mods, bro. Now we caught hundreds of dealers posting 2023 stock at a dollar just in case the 12-year-old filtering penny bikes can be upsold into a penny galley. And then there's the great wall of machines priced at one, two, three, four, five dollars. Let's count bigger buckets and turn down the opacity. There. There's our heat map. So the main shape we see is this hard ramp between 2010 and 2000. And this cloud shows motorcycles holding their relative value for the first 13 years before they hit that unifying decline only to exit a decade later plateaued around three grand. So if you have a new bike, hold on to it until it's about to enter its second decade and then sell before the crash. If you need a new bike, buy one from the year 2000 to benefit from a baseline to price motorcycle with maximum lead left in the pencil. Of course, these 30,000 data points were all scraped from cities. So let's try that in a small town. No, mom, I didn't mean it like that. No, you can't unplug it now, Mom, I'm scraping. Okay, weird trend line here. And the rise around 1970 makes sense, things get collectible, but the downward tug off the showroom is funky. It's not that new bikes are somehow cheaper. I suspect that new bikes tend to go back to dealerships. Dealerships tend to be in the cities, so anyone selling a new bike privately is probably selling a cheaper model that Rebel 300 they bought to pass the MSF course. Let's trim the graph to 2010 and overlay our city scrape. Aha, I'm driving a couple hours to Big B versus Saskatchewan will save you about two grand across the timeline. That's useful to know. And why pay a premium for Regina if you can be in Big Beaver in an hour? And since we're driving a long way for our deal, let's protect our investment with Sizap. We use Sizap trackers. It's the only reason we let them sponsor this video. They connect to your battery. I'd always recommend soldering some longer leads to reach a heightier spot. Now I can track my prize in real time, receiving alerts for any bump or crash event, or just mining maps of my coolest rides. And because it's an active sender, it can't be passively scanned for by any crook with an iPhone. Of course, this does introduce a vampiric draw, but you'll get a battery level notification if you stop riding for long enough to keep it charged, which should never happen. The app can call you so it's never overlooked. It can track your riding buddies, your altitude, your speed, any trip stats you care to know. The device is 300 bucks, which includes a lifelong no subscription 4G plan. Rather refreshing in a world where every lemonade stand wants $19.99 for the rest of your earthly life. Installing an anti-theft device might save you more than 300 insurance dollars anyway. At the very least, I can save you 10% if you click that link below. So Manu a Manu, this is what the manufacturer share looks like. And Harley outsells everyone on the showroom floor, but surprisingly, three of the Japanese four have more of the used market. I guess being unkillable and highly swappable will get you into two thirds of the population. I graph that. Ah. This is the motorcycle graph. Japan, America, 
and a few Triumphs, KTMs, BMWs, and Ducatis that haven't been scrapped yet. The trend line for Japan is what we now expect, big losses in the second decade, bottoming out around three grand, with a very slight bump into collectability. European models do resurge earlier and with more magnitude. To take advantage of the stronger collector market, you'd want to buy a 2000-era Eurobike when the curve very nearly meets Japanese prices. And then Harley, whoo, I haven't seen a curve that flat since I left Saskatchewan. You gotta respect how HDs hold their value, like most farm equipment. <laughs> so, sell your existing bike in a city when it's a decade old. Drive to a town and buy two replacement bikes that are 20 years old, one European and one American, then sell them again when they're classics to turn a profit on 50 years of riding. But just for the sake of international relations, I mapped the geographic density of bikes selling below a trend line. Turns out Colorado and Washington have the tastiest used markets in the USA, both places where many people ride, yet there's still a winter coming to chill prices. Meaning Canada is an even better place to buy. And what a lovely piece of information that Facebook has provided to us Canadians. And now that we've seen the only thing worth a damn on the blue butthole of the internet, I encourage you all to get off the metaverse while you still can.